In this video, we'll look at how numbers of a fractional part can be represented in fixed point form in binary in a given number of bits and in floating point form in binary in a given number of bits. Let's start with a recap of how we store binary integers. Look at this 8 bit binary number line. Note how the place values double as we move right to left. Unlike unsigned binary with 2's complement, the leftmost bit, the most significant bit or MSB, always represents a negative number. So the number 6 would be represented as 00000110, 4 plus 2 is 6. To store numbers of a fractional component, such as 6.5, we extend the number line from left to right. Note how the place values now half as we move from left to right. We place a binary point between the 1 and the half column. Using this format, 6.5 would be represented as 00110100. A 4 plus a 2 plus a half is 6.5. The number 3.75 would be represented as 0001 1110, a 2 plus a 1 plus a half and a quarter, 3.75. We can also easily store negative numbers of a fractional component using this format. Remember, as this is a negative number, the most significant bit must be a 1. Using this format, minus 6.5 would be represented as 1100 1100. A minus 16 plus an 8 plus a 1 plus a half, bringing our value up from minus 16 to minus 6.5. This method of storing fractions is known as fixed point binary, as the position of the point is fixed on the number line. Note that the range of numbers we can now store is more limited, as some positions on the number line are being used to store the fractional part of the number. The biggest positive number we could store with this 8 bit format is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 8, 4, 2, and a 1, plus a half, a quarter, and an 8, or 15.875. Now, you may have spotted that some numbers can't be stored accurately. How, for example, would we store 1 third using this format? Well, the best we could manage in this format would be 0000, 0000, 0000 which represents a quarter 0.25, which is not a third. However, it's the closest we can get using the format we've been given. We could extend the number line to allow for more fractional parts, but the pattern would just repeat 101010 forever. We actually can't represent a third precisely. To increase accuracy, we can change the way we use the binary point. While we're still using 8 bits to store the number here, the 8 bits on the number line change. To put it another way, the binary point is floating up and down the number line. In this example, we're using 8 bits from minus 8 down to 1 16th. 4 bits for the whole number part and 4 bits for the fractional part. In this example, we're using 8 bits from minus 64 to a half, but we're using 7 of the bits for the whole part and only 1 bit for the fractional part. Note how the size of the number we can store has increased at the cost with reduced accuracy. In this example, we're storing numbers from minus 4 to 1 32nd. We're only using 3 bits for the whole number and allowing 5 bits this time for the fractional part. The size of the number we can store has decreased, but we can now store the number with a higher degree of accuracy or precision. 
The important takeaway here is that the binary point is moving, floating up and down the number line. As it does, we can use more or fewer bits to store the fractional component, and this is known as floating point binary. The big advantage of this approach is that with just eight bits, we can choose to increase either the size of the number or the accuracy of the number, but at the cost of the other. Now, it may not have escaped your notice that with floating point binary, we have introduced a problem. Along with the actual number which needs to be stored in binary, we also need to store the position of the binary point on the number line. We do this by splitting the bits into two parts. The mantissa, that's the number or the value itself, and the exponent, the position of the binary point in the number. The number of bits used for the mantissa and exponent is determined by the data type. A 32-bit single precision number, for example, uses 24 bits for the mantissa and 8 for the exponent, giving 24 bits of precision. In the exam, the number of bits used for the mantissa and exponent will always be stated. In this example, we've used a 5-bit mantissa and a 3-bit exponent. Let's look at an example of a number being stored in floating point binary. 01100011. Those first five bits are the mantissa, and the last three bits are the exponent. To convert this into base 10 decimal, we first need to look at the exponent, which tells us where the binary point will be positioned. Note that the binary point always starts after the most significant bit, MSB, between the first two digits in the mantissa, but that is not where it ends. So we start by converting the exponent. Now note the most significant bit in the exponent is representing minus 4 as we store it in 2's complement, so the exponent here is 2 plus 1 equals 3. The exponent is 3. So we need to move the binary point of the mantissa three places to the right. We move it to the right because the exponent is positive three. We are finished with the exponent now. All it was doing was storing how many places to move the binary point. Now we've moved the binary point, we can and should ignore it. So we're left with naught one one naught point naught. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns that have a one in them. Note again how the most significant bit is representing minus 8 as we're using 2's complement. So here we have a 4 plus a 2, so our value is 6. Here's another example 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And again, the first five bits are the mantissa and the final three bits are our exponent. The exponent is 1, so we need to move the binary point in the mantissa one place to the right. We're finished with the exponent, so we can disregard it, and we end up with the number 01.110. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns that have a one in them. So we've got a one plus a half plus a quarter, or 1.75. In this final example, we have a negative exponent. So our complete number is 01000110, the first five bits for Mantissa again, and the final three for the exponent. Now the exponent is minus two, because we've got a one in the minus four column and a one in the two column. Minus four plus two is minus two. So we need to move the binary point of the Mantissa two places to the left this time, whereas previously with positive exponents we were moving it to the right. Now, we can't easily move the binary point off the left of our screen visually, so we're simply going to slide the bits across two places. We can now disregard the exponent, and we end up with 0 0.001000. Again, we apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns that have a 1 in them. So we have an 8, or 0.125. Note how we had to backfill with a couple of zeros to make the number work. Numerically, zeros are not significant, so this is allowed. 
If the number is positive, we always backfill with zeros as needed. If the number is negative, we backfill with ones instead. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How does a computer store fractions, real numbers? And what is the difference between fixed point and floating point binary representation?